Let's play ball. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your Daily Dose Guitar Information, the Troglodytes Guitar Show. Well, if you can't tell, today is a baseball-themed guitar. Is it a Gibson? Is it a Fender? Is it a PRS? I guess you'll just have to find out. But wait until you see this case. Surprise, it's Gibson, but isn't this the sweetest thing you have ever seen? If you're a baseball fan like I am, the case is literally a baseball. Now, this ball's been used a bit, but if it hadn't been, it would be white with the red stitching, and that's exactly what we have along this entire case. But my friends, our fun does not even end there. Wait till you see the interior. <laughs> it's a doofy little Les Paul baseball guitar. But look at this, you've got the infield brown on the top and then you've got the outfield green on the interior. So I thought that was pretty fascinating, but let's check out this guitar. It's basically just one of those new century Les Pauls, but instead of having a mirror pit guard over top of it, you just have this graphic of a baseball that's screwed onto the top. This thing's from 2007, whatever major league artists stands for, I'm not really too sure. But the other feature that made me go, you know what, I appreciate this thing, is when you flip it over to the back, this is a swamp ash body. Now in baseball, it's very common to use ash baseball bats. It's like this is the bat hitting the ball. So for that reason, I kind of wish the brown was on this side of the case and then the green outfield was up there because usually your bat and ball are laying in the dirt rather than the clean grass. So yeah, it's one of those doofy promotional guitars that has a very <laughs> limited buyer pool. But I don't know, I'm a baseball fan, so I thought it was cool enough to add to my collection. This one really doesn't appear to have been played much at all because this started life as a satin finish and even the neck is still nice and satiny <laughs> without being too glossed over. And for curious where I found this guitar, it was actually on Reverb. I was like, eh, it's kind of lame, but cool at the same time. So I made an offer and they just weren't interested because this was a consignment piece. But then after two weeks of almost no interest in this thing, imagine that. <laughs> they come back and they're like, hey, you still want this thing? And it's like, yes, I do. And it's at that point when they showed me this case. I just thought it was coming with a regular case. Honestly, this is what made me still say, yep, I will still pay that because <laughs> this case is just awesome. I love it. So to learn more about this one, let's go ahead and throw it on the workbench and take a look at its parts and specs before we give it a sound sample. All right, here's what it looks like underneath that giant pick guard. This looks better than the new Sentry I documented. You can see that thing here. It was very crude under there. This one's a little bit more polished. Instead of just a singular route going this way, it's actually kind of all built on each other. So here we can see the toggle switch cavity. It does not go all the way through to the back. So that's what's kind of unique about these, not having any back plates. Then this just becomes your whole pickup cavity, NS standing for natural satin in this case. You just get to see all the awesome wood grain of our ash body. And if you're wondering what these recessings are for, that's the legs of the pickup for height adjustment. Then it moves over here to our cavity from the electronics that we usually see from the other side. Then our ground wire goes over here to our bridge studs. Now let's check out our wiring. It's just all your usual Gibson branded stuff. You've got your ceramic disc capacitors. And then it just says Gibson USA on the base plate of our pickup. So we'll have to check out the readings to see what model they are. My guess is it's either going to be 490R, 490T, or a 490AT in the bridge with the 490R in the neck. But I get 13.61 in the bridge, 7.6 in the neck, and the middle position for fun, 4.87. So yes, that's the 490R, 490AT set. This whole thing is actually a clear pick guard, and then you just have a graphic underneath it. It's like a vinyl material. So it's not cheap paper by any means. Ultimately, what I would love to do with this is get somebody to make me this design without the MLB branding right here and make it out of real baseball material. Still have the obnoxiously large stitching because it's just supposed to be a giant baseball, but that would be really cool. Because that's the main thing that makes this one lame in my opinion, is the dating of it to 2007 to something that isn't like the World Series or something. But here it is, back on the instrument. It does give you kind of a strange gap between your pickup and your neck because that's another unique feature here is we do not have any type of a pickup ring it's just mounted to our pick guard so kind of like fender style and the angle that the neck comes into the body is a little bit different you see how much neck is standing up right there so it's kind of like a 70s flying v in that aspect honestly it's not my favorite on a les paul the bridge is a standard nashville pw branded and we've got a full weight tailpiece here 
However, it doesn't look like the usual style Gibson used. But our controls from the top side, they just have these black top hat style knobs. It's a regular two volumes, two tones. With your toggle switch up here. And it's important to note that this is a flat top Les Paul in case it wasn't clear. So more like a Les Paul Special or a Les Paul Junior. Moving on from our ash body, we have a mahogany neck with a rosewood fretboard. Now sadly, all these beautiful b-roll shots that you're seeing, I had to film that before I cleaned up the frets and made them super shiny, but here's what they can look like if you put some work into them. Fretboard conditioned up beautifully. However, this whole guitar feels really dry. Just the natural satin that hasn't been played and buffed into a semi-gloss. And we just have boring old dot inlays. This is just a huge missed opportunity. At least for the 12th fret, couldn't we have had real mother of pearl baseballs that had the red stitching? I would do that modification. But we've got a 12 inch fretboard radius with a 24 3 quarter inch scale length, a nut width of 1.7 inches, which increases to 2.07 by the 12th. And then sadly, another missed opportunity, 0.82 first fret neck depth, 0.89 at the 12th. Like, come on, Gibson, you have a baseball guitar, give it the baseball bat neck. <laughs> nope, this one's just a slim 60s C shape. Here that is at the first fret and the 12th fret. No baseball stuff at the headstock, just your regular silk screened logos, Les Paul model and Gibson. Truss rod's looking good. And we have a blank truss rod cover. Moving on to the back. You know, now that I've realized, hey, there's no back plates, it's kind of interesting. I don't think I've seen an ash body Les Paul that doesn't have some sort of a back plate to it. But you can see it is a two piece ash body, so that's pretty all right. And we've got some cool wood grain over here and it does indeed have a comfort cut. So at this point in time when this thing was made, we already talked about the new Century series. That is exactly what they had. They had that little belly cut right there and then they had this. So they likely just used the new Century CNC code for this one to route it all out except for it's an ash body instead of being mahogany. Because at the same time of this, there were ash studios out there as part of the Smartwood series, but they had the carved top, I do believe. It's just kind of an amalgamation of those two different models. Condition-wise, I was telling you, it was pretty clean. I thought it was like mint condition. But now if you get back here in the light, there is a very long impression line. Not 100% perfect, but the light ash body definitely helps hide that. I was talking bad about how this thing was constructed earlier, but the side profile shot where you get to see a little bit more of that dark mahogany and the rosewood right up along the ash wood grain is kind of cool. Because with that giant pick guard all over it, you don't really get to appreciate the wood grain. But that would be an option if somebody else would have got this guitar. They could have just took this vinyl sheet out of it and then you could just have this weird see-through ash Les Paul. But no, I'm happily putting this one in my collection. It's just one of those doofy guitars. You know, when I get that museum up and running, this is something people would appreciate, you know, if they like baseball, they go, aha, it's a baseball guitar. Now, how many people actually want to own it? Probably very few, but I'm sure a lot of people could appreciate it from afar. However, the case is a different story. I could see people fighting over this. However, I noticed something as I move this to the workbench. This is not a proper case for a flat top Les Paul. This is for a carved top Les Paul. You see how the neck kind of sits at an angle and it's not actually hitting our neck rest? That's because it's supposed to be a thicker Les Paul. So sadly, this is kind of not the best case for this guitar, but it's also the best case for it. Just needs a little bit more padding to sit flat. And then we've got the output jack on the side, a strap button down here, and our other one in our regular location. This, this I'm really mad about. This needed to be a maple neck, 100%. What are the two big woods that you use in baseball? Ash and MLB maple. We've got a nice dark looking mahogany neck. I mean, yeah, you could say, oh, it reminds me of the infield or whatnot, but a maple neck would have been so much cooler. But this one dates to 2007, 158th day of the year. Initial batch, 499 in production. So it was the last guitar in that batch before they switched over to their secondary shift. We've got the Grover tuners back here. But all said and done, this weighs a regulation, seven pounds, 4.9 ounces. Let's go ahead and play ball.
Now let me know all about this 2007 Major League Baseball guitar. What are my final thoughts on this thing? Honestly, it's a lot better than the last new century I tried. That thing was just not that good of a guitar, so I wasn't expecting much out of this, but this thing actually has a pretty good resonancy to it. When you strum it, you really feel it, but at the same time, I think this pick guard's like absorbing a lot of that too. <laughs> but it was fun to play, you know, take me out to the ball game, other baseball related songs. Yeah, it's cool for that. However, as far as playing other stuff, it just doesn't feel appropriate. Like I had a hard time deciding, you know, what what is this really good for? Besides just being a cool display piece and dressing up for our Halloween celebration month here. Probably not the guitar for everybody, but I hope you enjoy checking it out anyways. Hey, if you're new to the channel, October, I try to have some fun with the reviews and demos. So if you like me dressing up and doing spooky content, feel free to tune in all month long. I'm a daily upload channel, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. All right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.